Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to The Rewire Show. I'm so excited that you've joined us today. I have an amazing guest on the show today. Maria Hunt is here. Welcome, Maria. Hi, Ashley. How are you? Oh, I'm, so, I'm so elated that we're talking about this topic that I think is beyond valuable and so important for everybody to learn about. And I wish that I had learned about it way earlier in my life. So I'm so grateful you're here to talk about this. What did you say? You and I both. Right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we're giving you a golden nugget of information, hopefully way earlier in your life so that you can have tools we wish we had. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. So for those of you who are not yet familiar with Maria, let me tell you just a little bit about her. Uh, Maria Hunt is Australia's own good gut expert and the first to bring the breakthrough body ecology diet from the United States to the shores of Australia. She's a passionate, fun, and down-to-earth health advocate, and Maria practices alongside a medical doctor in Sydney using the body ecology principles. Maria has extensive experience dealing with candida, adrenal exhaustion, thyroid and autoimmune disorders, food allergies, chronic fatigue, malabsorption, and digestive disorders. So I'm sure none of you have experienced any of those, right? <laughs> I know I can like check off a lot of those. So I'm excited to talk about those. Exactly. Yes, Maria too. She's checking. Uh, Maria also balances her two busy NSW practices with regular TV appearances as a spokesperson for AGM Foods via the TV SN Health Channel, and she's been a guest uh, presenting for the Chef Pete Evans TV series, The Paleo Way. Maria is a health practitioner. She's a certified body ecology practitioner, a master practitioner of NLP, which we'll have to talk about that on another show. There's so many things I want to ask her about, and also hypnotherapy and the Bowen therapist and polarity therapist. I mean, oh my goodness, all of these amazing things. So she also is the head of Australia with the state's body ecology diet. So seeing massive results and helping thousands of lives help become healthy lives now. So I'm so grateful that you're here. And again, thank you for joining me. Pleasure, Ashley. So good to be here. Isn't technology fantastic? You know, yes. just wherever you are in the world, here we are. Yes. So tell them where you are right now. I'm in actually downtown Armidale, about uh, five and a half hours uh, north of Sydney in Australia. So I'm up in the mountains. And it's about uh, minus six degrees, so it's cold. I'm not sure of your conversion, but uh, yeah, very cold. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's like that. so, so you're talking in Celsius right now. Yes, Celsius. I have to convert to your Fahrenheit. <laughs> that's okay. All of you can just look it up on Google. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I am right outside of Chicago, Illinois, in the States. So that's what's so cool about technology. You're right, that we can meet like this and... No, it works out so well. I love it. Amazing. Well, I have so many things I really want to talk to you about. So let's kind of start at the beginning. I would love if you could tell me a little bit more about you and your personal journey to getting into this work. Okay, Ashley. Well, I had years of just feeling totally exhausted and anxious, um, always on the edge. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like that, you know, that fight and flight feeling? That's what I was just living in, adrenaline pumping and such a bondage to my emotions. Mm -hmm. um, stress was not my friend. Um, it took a toll on the brain, gut, immune system, my poor nervous system. It was just, you know, and I was sick for many years with unexplained gut issues. Uh, I developed thyroid imbalance, adrenal fatigue, and it was just... It was just overwhelming and it was so, it's just debilitating. I don't know if, you know, you get to that stage where you go, I've burned out so many times I've lost count. Right. It's, uh, and I've just become back then on all my life so sensitive, you know, I could, uh, and there's pros and cons to that sensitivity because I'm pretty good at working into, I walk into a room and I can suss out BS pretty quickly and um, I can suss out the energy of the room pretty quickly. So it kind of makes it that safety zone, which is, which is good. So I've learned how to deal with um, being me. On, on, and I like to do that on all different levels, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. I think if you can come from so many different aspects, it can really gel in. 
Um, so I've overlaid lots and lots of research, um, which we were talking about earlier about DNA. I've studied, you know, our DNA and then that gave me a greater understanding of myself, my biochemistry, and um, also too with NLP with different patterns and, and breaking those negative loops. So that's, that was so beneficial for me to be able to break the negative loops. Um, so in this whole journey, then I, uh, I ended up about 13 odd years ago over in the States studying with um, the infamous Donna Gates of the Body Ecology Diet. She is brilliant. And Donna has been so generous to me. Every year I, I go over and I stay at her house. And um, yeah, so we're good friends and I, and I really appreciate that. And I've just learned so much and it's just kept expanding on because um, she was way ahead of herself with the, with the gut and getting the bacteria up and going. And then also I was so fortunate to, um, to hook up with uh, AGM Foods here in Australia. So they make all the fermented drinks and actually ship them to Donna over in LA so, uh, and sell them there. So they're, you know, masters at fermentation. So the three of us have kind of joined together and we've got this, you know, great ally there working and, and helping people with that continual gut imbalance to get it back in into balance. Um, I also big believer in overlaying meditation. It took me years to get to get the hang of it though, Ashley. I've got to tell you, I was hopeless at meditating. I was thinking, she's glad to see here any longer, you know, I've got to go. Exactly. <laughs> My whole life was push, 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 you know, burnout, burnout. So eventually I got the gist of it and um, thank heavens for that. So I love the meditation bringing that in and able to calm my body down. And also too, as we were talking about Tosha Silva, um, dot com. She's a wonderful, um, you know, person over there in the States. I love her because she's all about, you know, stop pushing. <laughs> so that was a great wake up call for me. Um, and then I accept, you know, every day it's still a work in progress, but it's come a long way from where I started. Amazing. And, you know, when you started telling me about the story of where you were when you were just, you know, in the stress and in the fight or flight constantly, I can just hear the energy of everybody who's listening saying, that is exactly what I'm dealing with. Because it's so true. I mean, and I've, I've spoken to so many of the listeners and they're so stuck in that, you know, that heightened fight or flight space where, where it does almost feel like a desperate space. Like, I can't continue like this. It's it's painful and it's exhausting and it's like constantly pushing, like you said too. I mean, yeah, and it's it's every day just waking up in that state, and that is exhausting. And it really compounds your gut, and and your gut is you know your brain, gut, immune system, the whole lot. It just compounds it, and you can have the best. You know, I have spent literally hundreds of thousands of dollars on my health with the best vitamins and minerals and protocols and yes. cell therapy in Mexico and then over to the States to other therapies and, yes. you know, injecting in my backside to drips in my arm, you know. <laughs> I have done so many things. <laughs> so you've got to be able to calm the body down. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so you also had mentioned that you were finally now able to meditate. And this is a little bit of a jump forward, but I'm just so curious. Do you find that it's easier for you to meditate when your gut is more balanced? It is. It is because your body is a lot calmer and you're not so agitated. So it just calms everything down and then it is easy. So it's a bit of the chicken before the egg because when you can actually hit that meditation, then it does calm down the gut uh, and the, the stress hormones. So, but yeah, either way, just, yeah, it was a godsend for me to be able just to take that, that space. Amazing. So I'm hearing you say that meditation can help you calm down, but then also when you're calmed, it's easier to meditate. So they're both really good spaces. Yeah. <laughs> both the winner just jump in you know and I then I first started after a while I even made you know an hour and then I did two hours and I had so much pushing to go yes I've got to do two hours and it was just it was insane with this pushing and now it's like just let go of it all you know just take it as it comes um, yeah 
100% agree. Let go. Ugh. And of the expectations, of the need, of the outcome, when you let go, there's so much more fluidity in your life. So. Exactly. And our whole lifestyle in Western world is so geared to achieving. You know, we yeah. have to achieve. We've got to get this done. And otherwise, you know, there's a rating system of how well you've done. And um, so to be able to step out of that, that's fantastic. You know, every now and then you put your toe back in, you go, no, get out. <laughs> Not interested in that. Yes. So, all right. You have, you have talked a little bit. You've touched quite a bit. Uh, you know, on hinting towards what we're talking about, leaky gut. So let's get, let's kind of uh, talk about the foundational element of, of what it is. So can you share with us, you know, what is leaky gut? And maybe yeah. if you could also share, like, what are some of the symptoms? Yeah. So some of the symptoms are chronic diarrhea, constipation, gas, bloating, nutritional deficiency, um, compromised immune system, headaches, brain fog, uh, memory loss, excessive fatigue, skin rashes and problems with acne, eczema, uh, rosacea, um, those insane cravings for sugars and carbs, arthritis, joint pain, um, you know, undiagnosed depression, anxiety, oh, ADD, ADHD, um, any autoimmune diseases, um, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, celiac, Crohn's, all of these can go back and be symptoms of uh, the leaky gut. So basically, the leaky gut is intestinal permeability, whereby the lining of the small intestine is damaged. And when it's damaged, you've got tight junctions between the cells. But when it's damaged, it makes the intestinal uh, lining there open up and it creates gaps. And that causes undigested food particles, toxins, bacteria, um, to actually leak through the intestines into the bloodstream. And gluten is the number, well, one of the, the major, major causes of leaky gut. It's so harsh on our digestive tract. Um, other inflammatory foods are, are dairy, um, toxic foods such as um, sugar, processed foods, excessive alcohol. And then we have infections that can cause the leaky gut with candida. And that's where we overlay so well the body ecology diet. Um, intestinal parasites and SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So this leaky gut, it's an integral part also too of um, any child with autism, ADHD. It impairs that brain function. So it's so harsh on our actual system. Yes. Oh my goodness. And it's I think that so many of you who are listening are trying not to laugh at how many boxes you just checked off of all the symptoms that Maria just said because or listed off because I was listening and I had I, I didn't know that I had such bad leaky gut. I had really bad leaky gut. I had brain fog, I had psoriasis, I had um, you know psoriasis. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I had a, a, just a laundry list of like so many, you know, I even thought I had, um, you know, arthritis and um, I, oh, I mean, I can't even remember all of the things that I had, but one of the things that was the most, the biggest struggle for me is such a, a, a my brain fog and my exhaustion and the anxiety. And I was always in the fight or flight. I was always like, buzzing I was always like high and I, I didn't want to be like that and it was so awful to have such severe brain fog all the time that I dove deep into taking care of healing my gut and I have no brain fog I wake up and I am awake and aware and I don't have any of the symptoms anymore it, I'm just I'm a fan of what you do <laughs> yeah different doesn't that that's the game changer, isn't it? Game changer. And you just go, oh, here I am. I'm into the day. And you can get out there and enjoy it. And what tends to happen too, Ashley, is when you start to feel better, you forget where you've come from. Mm -hmm. It's true. Like and, I just did. Yeah. I just go, oh, my gosh, I've come all that way, you know. And that's really, it's a, it's a big thing to, to make that leap. So well done for you for getting along that path. Oh my goodness. And, and I'm a mom. And so having, 
energy consistently and not being exhausted and stressed all the time is important to me. And it's, it's you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So say it again. Wait. What were you saying? You've got to have energy. It's compulsory fun with children. You have to have energy. You have to have energy. But a lot of moms that I encounter are in the brain fog and have, you know, severe exhaustion, have a lot of the symptoms that you were talking about, and they don't know to look at their gut. And a lot, that's a really good point too, actually, because a lot of people will um, they accept that as a default point. Yes. And it's not. This is not how we need to be can change so if you've got that oil light flashing on the dashboard saying those symptoms that is not what we need to accept it's not our default position we can change that i'm going to pull that out as a quote that is <laughs> that is a bright flashing light moment of this interview i want you all to hear that maria will you say that again <laughs> about the oil light flashing it's well, it, it's just the, it. These, yeah. Victims are like an oil light flashing on the dashboard saying, hey, something is out of balance. Right. It's kind of like, you know, when you're driving down the road and the oil light comes up and we go, oh, I don't want to know about it. We put a piece of gum over it. Nah, it's okay. And we drive another 10 Ks down the road and, and then the car, you know, breaks down and gives up. Then we have the audacity to get out kicking and screaming, blaming the car for letting us down, but it's been flashing for 10 Ks or 10 miles saying, hey, this something is wrong. So this isn't our default position. Okay, we don't have to accept this. We can do something about it. So if you have an oil light flashing, don't put it off. Do something about it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Just one other thing so all of you listeners know. One of the other things that was, I, I also have asthma. And uh, I had severe allergies that kept me indoors every summer, almost all summer and totally healing my gut, which I don't know if it's ever 100% healed, but it's so healthy now that I'm outside with my child almost every day and I have no asthma attacks anymore. Maybe like once a month or something, which is, I used to have like two a day. But I'm just saying like, just so you know what's possible. I mean, the, the transformation is massive and it's changed my life. And I know so many others who are listening are really in the struggle and don't know how much is possible. And so much of the, like the asthma and the symptoms come back and originate in the gut. I mean, so much research. Michael Gershon, your, you know, your guy over in the States, the second brain, he's all about that, get that up and going again. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact, see, with our gut, we have two kilos of bacteria. Uh, so that's about, I think, three pounds for you. Uh, I have to do the conversion 2.2. Sure. So yeah. So quite a few pounds there. So with that, out of those, then we have 85% good bacteria and 15% bad bacteria. And that's fine. We can live like that. But when we get stressed or diet, the pill, antibiotics, and there's a time and place for antibiotics. I work alongside a medical doctor and sometimes are necessary. Environmental chemical pollution and parasites, all of this has the potential to knock out our gut. So out of that two kilos, then what happens, you can have 60% bad bacteria and 40% only good bacteria. But why is it so important is that 95% of serotonin, our happy hormones, the ability to feel good and bounce through the day, that comes from the gut, not the brain. And 80% of our immune system is manufactured in the lining of our gut wall. So our gut is imperative. You want to have happy hormones, feel good, look good, and get into the day, have a healthy immune system, look after your gut. Amazing. Isn't it? Isn't it? We must do that conversion on two kilos for pounds. <laughs> I know. I'll write it in the notes of this interview yeah. <laughs> for sure after it's over. I'll do the conversion for all of you. So you'll see it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. a lot. It is. It really is a lot. And I mean, it makes me feel hopeful that you're on the show talking to me about this because I think that you know, you're out there spreading awareness, sharing yeah. with people that you don't have to keep accepting the symptoms that you think are just the way your body functions. You can change it. And I think one of the first things to do that you're saying is to look at your gut and how to heal your gut, right? Exactly. And 
Ashley, for all your viewers, predominantly the, or whomever are in the States, you're sitting in a gold mine over there with Donna and all her beautiful fermented foods. So if you Google bodyecologydiet.com, um, then there's the, you know, all of the fermented drinks and the um, powders, etc., all about healing the gut. So we need to get in, we need to remove those irritants like the sugar and the bad oils, vegetable oils, soya bean, unfermented soya bean, um, canola, poorly raised meats, etc. A lot of animals are just in their own poop there. And that prevents, an over, you know, that promotes an overgrowth, uh, overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria so and parasites. So we need, when the gut lining is triggered, then that inflames and weakens our body. And also remember our, our intestinal lining, the small intestine, it creates those gaps. So we need to repair that. And that's where you can use you know, our glutamine and digestive um, support there and repopulate. So um, you can put the beneficial bacteria back in with the fermented um, drinks. I mean, fermentation is so trendy now. When I first got into <coughs> fermentation, most people would say, oh, yes, I drink beer. You know? <laughs> it's like, no, we don't want to get into beer. <laughs> so, yes, it wasn't quite on the radar then like it is now. So, mm -hmm. But if you can get a diet rich in omega-3s because they're wonderfully anti-inflammatory, yeah. nutrient-dense fermented foods, um, fermented um, cultured vegetables, the fermented powders, the fermented drinks, um, then that can help reduce candida. So many women are prone to a candida issue. Um, yeah. And that, that really does cause havoc. So, and it inflames the body. So also two, which is really good, a lot of people miss, vitamin D. So if you can get it from the sun, great. Um, a lot of people can't convert. I've got a, what they call a snip in my DNA. So I've got a tendency not to convert properly. So I take vitamin D every day because it'll help reduce any inflammation in the GI tract. Um, and I also put K2 with that because that helps with the uptake of vitamin D. So if you can get in there, get the inflammation down, um, avoid any factory farmed meats. You know, there's so much now with hormones, antibiotics and toxins. Um, you've got grass fed over there each year when I come over. There's so much selection of your beef and chicken, turkey, all grass fed, which is wonderful. Um, the other thing too we use a lot of for bringing down inflammation, um, taking out irritants, is we'll use quinoa and millet and buckwheat and armorants. And um, we soak that because all grains, gluten or non-glutinous, have a phytic acid around it. So when we soak that in some water, put a splash of any of the fermented drinks with that, leave it overnight, we've broken down the phytic acid, the enzyme inhibitor. So it makes it easier for us to absorb. See, so many people will say to me, oh, Maria, I've done quinoa and millet, but, you know, I, I get this reaction. But I said, you know, have you soaked it and prepared it? No. So if you soak it and put either organic apple cider vinegar and all the fermented drinks with it, then we'll, we'll deal with and help eliminate the um, phytic acid that's, you know, breaking down in the gut. And I just want to make sure you're talking about quinoa, right? Yes. Yes, you are. We've got to get our accents synced here, Ashley. We love your accent. <laughs> no, you've got the accent, not me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> You've got the accent. Yeah, quinoa. <laughs> it's so funny. I just, I was thinking to myself, what if some people aren't really sure what that is? No, it's probably something you know well. Quinoa. Yeah, quinoa. <laughs> But it is beautiful. It's such a great amino acid profile and it's high, you know, with the protein and the iron and yeah. So get into your quinoa. <laughs> it's so funny. Yes. Get, and that that's a trick I didn't know about and I'm, yeah. excited, about I'm excited about that. Um, yeah. So I would love to shift gears a little bit, and I really wanted to make sure we could talk about this one thing that I don't really know a lot about, and I'm, I'm looking forward to learning from you. I just am going to ask you straight out, what are oxalates? Very good question. <laughs> it's one of my favorite subjects because it's getting, a, it's just becoming um, an issue that's being overlooked. Okay, so 
if uh, let's just dive into some symptoms so how many of the children have ever had um, i've got this one beautiful client she came to me her mum brought her in she's three years old and she'd had these excruciating hot wheeze so it would burn her all the way through when she was actually weeing urinating um vulvodynia um where it's just pain in and around the vagina um, just continual diarrhea, stomach pain, kidney stones, um, severe back pains, um, skin outbreaks all around the lower jaw here, um, diabetes, joint pain, anemia, osteoporosis, arthritis, which we were talking about earlier, dry eyes, eczema, and anxiety. So anxiety, poor balance and poor memory, I'm going to go into that because this will hopefully resonate more with your viewers, sinus, thyroid imbalances um, and digestive issues on the spectrum, etc. And it also goes hand in hand with leaky gut. Mm -hmm. So with oxalates, there are no symptoms that are specific to oxalates. The symptoms depend on where the oxalate crystals are deposited in the body. So we can get these crystals can deposit in our nose, in our joint, kidney, urethra, bladder, brain, and gut. So, and at some stage, so what happens is they naturally occur in plants. So spinach, and you know you get that hairiness on spinach, or you eat kiwi fruit and you can feel that hairiness? Yeah. That's the actual oxalate. So what happens is they're a natural protector, nature's wonderful, against herbivores. Mm -hmm. So a being attacking the plant. So it's just naturally occurring. And so that's fine. And um, what can happen though is when we ingest it, it comes up like shard-like glass within our digestive tract and can actually cause so much of a hiccup. Now, just so you know, I'm just going to concentrate on the food component of it. There's other metabolic reasonings, etc., DNA, but let's just take from the food component at the moment. It's not the bit one or the B or, but it's just part of it. So when they store, so we eat all of these high um, oxalate foods like um, spinach, raw cacao, kiwi fruits, almonds, almond meal, almond milks, all of that, and then yeah, we can get, for some people, high concentrations of these crystals beneath the skin and suffer from this mystery Ill eczema. Or we can get this mystery pain in our knees, hip, joints, etc., because it builds up deposits. Mm. Um, others can store in the central nervous system, so that can cause, some, for some people, poor balance if it clusters around the cerebellum. Now, with the anxiety, if it gathers around the amygdala, where the set of neurons are located deep in the brain's um, temporal lobe, then it's a major role in processing emotions. So it can then affect our anxiety. Uh, poor memory, if it's located in the hippocampus. So these can be signs like there's um, a, a physical imbalance. Um, and also, too, it guarantees that the energy will never be at an optimal level. No matter how much sleep that you get, you can never wake up feeling refreshed. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you get these deposits. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, and as, as the plant ripens, it increases the amount of oxalates within the plant. Oh. So, and, and with that, so you've got nuts and sweet potatoes, potatoes, black pepper, um, all of those which, and peanut butter, which become staple foods, we eat so much of it, then they can cause a HIPAA. Now, with oxalates, there's no nutritional value to it, and it's normally cleared out through our urine and stool. So it is an anti-nutrient, and what that means, it interferes with the absorption of magnesium, calcium, iron, and zinc. Keep in mind, zinc, is your brain, gut, and immune system. And if you're anxious and got low zinc, it's really, that's happened to me for years, low zinc and anxiety. <laughs> um, and then if it's binding to the calcium, then we can end up with osteoporosis. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a conundrum there. So calcium to um, the oxalate ratio, when that gets out of balance, that's when it forms these crystals. Mm. Now, here's the other thing. There's this beautiful bacteria called Oxalobacter formagenes. Okay. And 
if you have plenty of that in your gut, then you'll be able to break down the oxalates that you're consuming. It's not an issue. And if you've got a metabolic pathway and DNA snips are dealing with it, yeah, it's fine. So if you've got these groovy former genies, then you can have uh, these oxalates. It's not going to be an issue. But if you've had antibiotics, uh-huh. it kills off the former genies. Oh. So how many people out there have had antibiotics? One, two, three courses, etc. It's so prolific now. Oh. Um, again, there is a time and place for, for many of us. We'd be dead if we never took it. So, but in doing that, it kills the former genies. Now, the other conundrum is you can't buy former genies. You can't go down to, you know, Whole Foods and get it off the shelf, etc., and um, start, you know, start a course. So when that happens is that then we've got to hope that we can feed them back up again. And for some people, they can. If they do knock it out with the antibiotics, it can take uh, up to a year to actually um, breed them back up again. Okay. So we want to, um, you know, get that back and get it going. But if the gut is inflamed and leaky, then what happens is, remember our gut, our gaps in the leaky gut? Mm-hmm. The actual oxalates are absorbed. They cross the intestinal barrier easily. Oh, no. And that leads to a massive build-up in the body. Okay? So that's where leaky gut then overplays with the oxalates. So most people who have oxalate issues, they have no uh, former genies. They don't digest fats properly, and then the calcium binds to the fat, or they have an inflamed, leaky gut. Um, We can get those oxalates via food or by natural sugars. So if you've got a yeast, if you've got candida and that overgrowth, then that then works. It's an important fuel for the oxalates. So the candida actually fuels the oxalates. Mm -hmm. So you get another conundrum there. So we've got to get the candida under control anyway, in with the oxalates. So, so many people come to me and actually go, right, Maria, I've got healthy, but I'm coming back now with inflamed joints. I've broken out in my skin. I've got UTIs, urinary tract infections. I'm going, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Then they've changed in. They've had this smoothie with almond milk, raw cacao, beet greens. For lunch, they have large spinach salad with nuts, soya protein, <clears throat> sesame seeds, um, and snacks of dark chocolate with almonds, macadamia. Like, this is an oxalate bomb for some people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, Maybe for me, too. <laughs> no. This so, is awful. <laughs> keep in mind, if you've got the former genies, our groovy former genies, or your metabolic pathway, then you're fine. But if you've had that history of illness and if you've got antibiotic use in the past, you may be you know, having a hiccup there. And also fructose converts to oxalates. So a high fruit diet will convert to oxalates. Okay. So when we get kids on the spectrum and they, they, um, they have a lot of staple foods and they'll have a lot of peanut butter, etc., then that becomes very high oxalate intake. Um, I remember this one beautiful mum, <clears throat> she wanted to help her son so much. And so he was having these spinach salads and she was literally doing handfuls of sesame seeds sprinkling over the top and the raw cacao. And this poor boy, his whole genital region was just so inflamed from the oxalates. Yeah. Um, so we can change it though. That's where we overlay the, the low oxalate diet with the body ecology diet, the anti-candida diet. Um, the other thing is drink lots and lots of water because when if you're dehydrated, the oxalates are building up. We want to flush out the oxalates. Mm-hmm. Um, we're lucky too that one of the uh, leading biomedical researchers for oxalates is an Australian by the name of Susan Owens. And if your audience wants to Google low ox diet, um, it's fantastic with all the different, you know, subsets of information, the food categories break down. And she has an online Yahoo group, um, which is very uh, popular in the stage. So I'm going to look at it. <laughs> yeah. Also, too, when the um, research varies, so you can go to different ox, low ox sites and they will talk about um, like avocado, for instance. There's some varieties of avocado in the States that are high oxalates but they're not out here. 
So oxalates can vary um, due to the condition of the soils, the time of harvest, um, and the genetic differences in that species of the plant. So that, that can get a little confusing. I tend to always default back to Susan because she's been at this for years. Um, another thing that's really good um, so that we can help leach out the oxalates, it won't actually eliminate it, but leaches it out, is in the food preparation. So if we took, um, for instance, red skin potatoes, which have got, you know, a considerable area there with oxalates, if we boil that up and discard the water, then we're lowering the oxalate content. content. And the same with um, quinoa. Quinoa has oxalates there. Again, soak, rinse it, soak it, rinse and boil and rinse again. You're helping to leach out the oxalates. So then it's lowering the count, which, which makes it a lot easier for us. So is so it great right to make yeah. the almond milk or the spinach better? The spinach, yeah, you can um, not steam it because when you steam it, you're releasing the oxalates into the water and it's swimming away. But if you boil it and discard the water. So anytime you can actually boil it up, discard the water, you'll lower it. Mm -hmm. um, and also the other thing that's wonderful, which is a double um, winner for us, is fermentation. Fermentation degrades oxalates. So that's why we have, you know, the fermented drinks, energy biotic, cocoa biotic, passion fruit biotic. You can get that in the States. Um, all of those, yeah, help to degrade oxalates. Um, the other area too, which is really economical to, um, to use, is uh, vitamins with citrates. So oh. calcium citrate, magnesium citrate. If you take that about 20 minutes before a meal, it helps to decrease the, uh, the value of oxalate in the food. So say um, calcium citrate, for instance, the calcium and oxalate bind, and then the citrate helps to degrade the actual oxalate. So that's a, a really good way of doing it. The same with um, B6, the vitamin P5P. <clears throat> that actually blocks the conversion of the sugars within oxalates, the arabinoids. Um, biotin dumps the yeast, so it's another handy one to put in there. And I'm a big, big believer in colonics and far infrared saunas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you do colonics at all? No, <clears throat> I don't. And maybe I should. Yeah, most definitely. It's like a rocket ship to health. <laughs> it, just, it fast tracks so much because you can get you can eliminate so many toxins with a colonic um i use the closed system there's two systems an open and closed system okay and um, if you've got a good practitioner and um you can really do a lot of releasing so we can get around the the intestines and the bowel wall a build up of toxins but with the colonics it's kind of like you know when you have spaghetti bolognese Mm -hmm. And you think that's all the crust is left there and you soak it overnight yeah. and you come back the next morning and just lifts off. Well, this is what this does. So we want to soak the bowel and then that helps to hydrate the edges and it helps lift up and remove the toxins. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So that's, that can really help with leaky guts and um, thyroid imbalances, adrenal fatigue, all of those areas because it's eliminating the toxins. Mm -hmm. Find a good practitioner. There are so many uh, good, you know, colonic therapists in uh, the States. I go to a beautiful one, Luis, in, um, in LA each time I'm, I'm over there. Because after you've been flying long haul, you're very dehydrated. So go in and slowly soak the bowel and hydrate the body and get rid of these toxins. This sounds, it's like, I'm, you're selling me on everything. I'm like, yes, I definitely <laughs> want to do this. But, you know, the thing is, I teach so much about, you know, follow your intuitive knowing. And yeah. what you were saying lights me up. It makes me feel like, yes, that will make me feel better. That feels expansive in my world. My, my body's like, yes, do that. <laughs> Listen to her. <laughs> you know, so in all of you who are listening, follow that knowing. There might be some things that Maria has talked about that you might not fully understand. But if it lights you up, if it makes you feel like, Ooh, that something within my body kind of wants that. Follow that knowing, you know, instead of fully needing to get it all, follow that intuitive knowing. Exactly. And if you have any queries, email me. I don't mind at yes. all. Yeah, that's it. The other thing too to keep in mind is the dumping. 
Um, remember we were talking about stores of the oxalates in the yeah. body and the yeah. joints and the organs. So what can happen is we need to go slow. So if you're on that high oxalate diet and you've got an issue, you've had antibiotics and, and it's signaling that you, know, you need to do something there, we want to actually slowly dump the oxalates from the body. So you wouldn't go onto a strict low, low um, ox diet straight away because you would dump too much and you would just feel so sick, okay? And you would go, what is that woman on about? <laughs> I'm supposed to feel better. Yeah. So you slowly change the oxalates around. And um, if you do have um, that oxalate um, dump, um, which you will at some stage, which is okay, you want to gently oxalate dump, the competitor to oxalate is sulfur, bicarbonate, chloride, and the biotin. So if you have a, a bath and put some Epsom salt baths in, bicarb soda or magnesium chloride, um, or if you haven't got a bath, do a foot bath. Um, I was doing a conference call the other night, doing a foot bath of um, my Epsom salts, and it was fantastic, and I thought, why I'm just having it all happen here. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. And, you know, take the biotin because that will help dump the yeast. Um, and you, what you may notice is that your stools may turn a grey or yellow colour. And that's the oxalate slowly being released. Or your urine gets this shiny crystal, you know, disco uh, sparkles happening as they're being dumped out. Huh. Uh, so, yeah, this can take up to a year to to work it, its way through. Mm -hmm. So we did, yeah, in Australia we have the, uh, it's called smartdna.com.au and so that tests all your DNA which will go into another state at another time, but also has a test called smart gut. And that test actually is fantastic for testing for former genies, oxalobacter former genies, as well as a myriad of other pathogens and will tell you you know what foods you know you shouldn't be eating and how it's affecting your body it's a fabulous test but it tells you whether you've got a form of genes oh. and if you've got it great look after it we never calorie count but we do oxalate count yes. but if you haven't got it you know okay i need to look up you know look out for this and especially how many women do you know are so prone to utis to urinary tract infections mm -hmm. i mean that is the classic for an oxalate builder mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I hear it over and over again. And, you know, oh. I, I feel like everything you're saying just, you know, it, it addresses so many of the issues that so many highly sensitive people deal with and beyond, not just highly yes. sensitive people, of course. But what I hear over and over again from these, you know, the people who, who approach me is also they're carrying unwanted weight. And no matter what diets they do, they're not losing it. And I am sure that it has to do with, you know, so speak to that for just a second, because I feel like okay. everybody would want to hear that. We have between two to four kilos, gosh, I've got to do the conversion on that, two to four kilos of impacted fecal matter around our abdominal region. Oh, wow. So, yeah, if, I, I, when I first got into colonics oh, 30 years ago, it was amazing. You just, you, just the weight loss is from toxins being released. And also, too, it helps to decrease the sugar cravings. You know, 30 years ago, we didn't have probiotics back then. Um, so, but if you use the colonics uh, in conjunction with probiotics, that helps decrease the sugar cravings. It helps to lose weight. And I also use that in conjunction uh, with one of the main principles with body ecology is the food combining. Okay. If you put a meat and a potato together, okay, the enzymes, when you have the meat, it produces, when you see it, it produces a, a protein enzyme. We start, you know, producing that to break it down. When we have a starch, it produces a starch enzyme. Now, when we eat that together in that one meal, what it does, it negates each other and it cancels the enzymes out so you can't break it down. Yeah. So that's when we get that, you know, that feeling where it's just like, oh my gosh, I've just done this terrible food combining. I've got meat and potatoes galore in there. <laughs> I can't break it down. That's it, Sherlock. You're not going to break that down because you've cancelled out the enzymes. Oh. But if you can still have the meat, but you put it with a low starchy veggies, okay? So the sakini oh. and the carrots and the cauliflower and the broccoli, and then it's happy. 
you will notice the difference. And you can still have the potatoes, but you put that with the um, low starchy veggies or the quinoa or the millet um, or amaranth, etc. They combine really well. But avoid putting like just meat and potatoes together. Yeah. That's just one component of food combining. So when we apply food combining with the fermented um, drinks, probiotics, and colonics, mm -hmm. wow, it is a game changer, Ashley. The, the weight just starts to, you know, we're getting rid of inflammation, we're getting rid of the toxins. And then, okay, if it's not moving, we can look at thyroid and adrenals, what's happening there and how they're interacting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I love that. <laughs> this I go for hours. <laughs> you know who else wants me to have maria back so we can <laughs> dig deeper and talk more about this topic because i do i want to talk more it's so exciting because it's there's so much out there mm -hmm. it is and you know i'm sure lots of people in the states are talking about this but I don't really hear them talking about it like you're speaking about it. And I okay. like your angle, the way that you approach it and explain it. It feels um, so holistic, so whole body, taking into account the whole of the being, the person. Yeah. And uh, just, it, you make it sound like accessible. <laughs> we can all do this, you know, and I appreciate that. Yeah, oh, good, Ashley. I mean, it's, it is a commitment. Um, but, yep. you know, if you've been on that slippery slope of ill health, you do anything. You just go, oh, God, whatever. You yeah. know, I remember hauling myself on a plane to go to the States and I was so sick, but I went, I've got nothing else. I've got to do this, you know, um, because I need to get better. Right. And, yeah. So, and we're still yeah. fortunate now what we've got access to. Yeah. Um, and there are economical ways of doing things as well. It doesn't have to always be high end expensive um, because health can get expensive when you start you know, ticking boxes there. But there are ways around it. And there's, it's, for me, it's keeping it practical. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Absolutely. So now that we've just touched on how so many people who are listening are struggling with health and um, their weight and you know, some of them are struggling with mood swings, anxiety. There's, there's so many things that a lot of the listeners are dealing with, you know, and I dealt with them too. So did you. So we're empathic. We understand. We've been there. We've done that. And we're on the other side. So yeah. I would love if you could take a moment to speak to the viewers, to just give them a word of encouragement and just sort of um, help them with their struggles, something that you could say to them. Yeah, I think. The main thing is um, you're not alone. There's a lot of people out there and it's so good to have Ashley here and what you're doing. This is phenomenal. When, I, when you contacted me and I looked at your site, I went, wow, someone who speaks my language. Yes, empath. Hey. <laughs> this is it. So, and um, I think what's super, super important is to go slow and low. Anything that you do, anything that you take, start slow and take a low dosage and just do it step by step because otherwise it's too easy to get overwhelmed and go, oh, this will never work, I'm, you know, I can't do this or I've got, you know, this huge detox and, and dumping. Um, but just start slow and low and just take it step by step. Um, I remember having panic attacks, you know, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, in Sydney is this beautiful bridge structure and I was driving across there and I had the worst anxiety attack and I just went, what am I going to do? It's peak hour traffic. There's just six lanes and I've got nowhere to go and the sweat and everything was pouring off me. I thought, I'm going to pass out. <laughs> so I hit the, um, the button for, you know, the, the lights flashing and crawled basically across the bridge and I went, Never again, I am getting a solution to this, you know. Um, so it is just believing that you can get solutions. Everyone's unique, everyone's different, but we can get there, but just slowly. Yeah, you don't have to accept that that's how it has to be for you. There are solutions out there. Yeah. Thank you for that. 
Well, you have left me wanting so much more. So I'm going to sort of leave it at that and uh, leave everybody else, the viewers, wanting more too, I hope. So all of you who are listening, let us know if you'd like to hear more and what topics you'd like to hear more about. And for now, I'd like to have Maria share with us how the listeners can learn more about you and your work. Yeah. Okay. So my website is www.yourdigestion.com.au and uh, there's a Facebook page, Your Digestion. And my email address is uh, Body Ecology, so B-O-D-Y-E-C-O-L-O-G-Y at Maria Hunt, M-A-R-I-A-H-U-N-T dot com dot A-U. And please, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have or direct you to contacts that I've got in the States, uh, et cetera. So, yeah. I love that. And, you know, there's some more social media and you also have a freebie that you're giving away as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's a cookbook there. It's a transitional cookbook. And um, so it's all about when we transition onto body ecology, uh, we just take it slow and low. So I'll send through the cookbook to you. Amazing. Amazing. So all of those links are underneath this video so that you can easily access all of those links and find her on social media, get the freebie, how kind of Maria to offer that to all of you listeners. Check out her website. You know, I hope that you'll take the next steps with Maria and, and find out what else she knows because we have barely, barely touched the surface. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so amazing. All right. Well, thank you again for joining me, Maria. I'm so grateful you were here. Today. Pleasure. Thank you for having me, Ashley. And yeah, hi to everyone out there. Excellent. Well, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you on the next show.